Hello again, my name is Martin Lachmeyer. I'm an illustrator, artist based in Austria, in the east of Austria, in a smaller village. We will take a look at my uh, tools that I use. So mainly tip pens and uh, fountain pens. The fountain pens as well with waterproof ink, used with waterproof ink. And where they are, uh, here. And this is a, an ink uh, brush. Also I will use this, another tip pen. This is something special, this is a fountain pen with a um, converter in it, but with one very flexible modified nip. So, uh, to modify this fountain pen this was really heavy and I didn't it quite good. Here is the same nip, but on a, on a nip holder, just a classic way, another fountain pen I use. But mainly I use this fountain pen from Pelican, also filled up with this uh, sketch ink with a waterproof ink which is made for fountain pens. This is a very light one so I can use it hours and hours the whole day and it's not that heavy like the other pens which are made of metal. They look good, very solid, but to draw the whole day I prefer the lighter fountain pens made of plastic or something like that. Okay, let's find a nice sheet of paper, who's, which is not too large, of course, for the next 30 minutes. It's a little bit of a challenge to finish a paper, a fresh drawing. But of course, I will, from time to time, I will speed up a little bit. Okay, let's choose this Fontaine paper, it's 300 gram, 12 by 50.5 inch or 30 by 40 centimeters, 300 gram of course, 100% cotton, that's important for the watercolor, the paint, the coloring of the drawing then. This is glued on four, on all four sides. With this pellet knife I can remove this from the pet. Of course you can also use these micro pens. I use them from time to time when I'm on the road or just want to try them out. Ah, oh, there are oh, holders. I was looking for them since a while. Okay, good to know that they are here. Ah, this is a pilot brush, um, also refillable. But this one is, you see here, with um, cartridges you can buy. And also a very good uh, product, but these are more maybe solid or... In the last weeks I used this one. And these are so the fine liners. For me, there is no uh, big difference between all these uh, brands. They are quite well. Let's start with my fountain pen. This, this fountain pens, um, when you don't use it for two or three days, they are a little bit dried out, but there's no problem. Just tip it into water and clean it. And they should work again. See, like I told you last year, mostly I am drawing a horizontal line. And then I start here in the left button corner, but for these drawings where I want to have some white arrows that could be fog or clouds or what else, just for the composition, I wanted to do that and that, that this uh, different 
parts, so dark parts, lighter parts, parts where there is no or less drawings and lines. And that's the reason why I would start, let's say here, with a bigger dome. The lines you can uh, try to draw them very slowly or just quicker ones. And I don't think very much while drawing this because I did it the last uh, four years or so since the pandemic. I started, I had the idea to draw this, these uh, cityscapes uh, without any people because everybody was at home and the streets were empty. Okay, let's say we do another element here and some shadows like always. And that you can see where, where we are going with this drawing. We can do some of these dark, big shadow errors, like this. And maybe when you did a mistake, something like this, yeah. This doesn't look so good, it should be something like that. Then we jump to our we jump to our ink with the dip pen and a good idea is always to put it in another larger mug that it don't fall over and your drawing is ruined. So I want to show you some splatter. Let's see if this the pen is a little elastic, it's flexible enough. Then you put it on the paper and not with the normal uh, direction against. You see? Maybe I can show it better. That's a very unflexible one. Is it now? No. The best way is to buy this one. This one is nice. So, okay, with ink it's a little bit easier. Okay, so just buy some of these. You can buy, find them at your art store or, uh, of course, in the internet in a web shop. And one big plus is that you have a big variety of, uh, of the lines, thicker lines, thinner lines, what else, uh, whatever you want to draw. This is now the, the zebra set G nip I showed you in the beginning and that's a wonderful workhorse very solid but flexible enough and of course we don't want to have one tower in one column and very in, a, in, a, in the same distance. So we want to overlap all these buildings. And here another tower and then when this goes down I do some buildings with roofs. And of course we will then color it and, and, and add shadows. And a window. It's a very easy part. 
can show you here just do one two three four of these classes or six or eight or three in a row whatever you want and then a shadow from one side and a shadow above and we have a window there let's do another one here and of course this is a very free sketch so I hope nobody will ever build something like that but it's a fun to draw this in the evening when I sit down and, and uh, watch uh, some streaming um, series or, or films I can do such a this size paper with uh, buildings in uh, one evening so sitting on the couch be comfortable and then in the end you have much details and uh, a nice uh, drawing but it's not that you hope that the time goes by and it's uh, it's it's a hard work no sometimes I'm a little bit disappointed when I have to finish the, the drawing because it's it's enough and but then I immediately start a new one okay so let's say Mm, yeah, <clears throat> we want then here some uh, clouds or dust. Uh, you you can do it without uh, lines, but maybe in the in the beginning it's uh, helpful to have here some uh, pencil lines. Let's say here and here, yeah. And then of course the tower will finish under these some elements here and some shadows under the roofs so and uh, it's not important it's not necessary it's not necessary to to do the line work first and then add the, the color or uh, the shadows or uh, uh, with water, um, ink with water for some gray tones. No, often I just after one or two buildings I, sta I start. I'm starting with the watercolor because then I can see what's going on if I'm on the right way. So I'm not I'm not always using this uh, big palette. Uh, mostly I use the smaller palettes. You can buy them uh, you can buy them empty or filled up. I buy them empty and then with these uh, watercolor tubes I fill them. Uh -huh. I didn't use that for a while and then I fill them up with the colors I want to use. Mostly these are indigo, indigo, blacks and browns and orange and reds. So blue, green and yellow are not the first colors I I'm used them. I don't use them the most. Uh, not very often. Okay, so let's start here. That you can see what happens. Let's. So uh, the tower should be a little bit darker, or lighter, brighter, in the top, and then getting darker when it's going uh, back to the ground, or the opposite. In this case, I'd like to do some darker areas at the top. And you can try to use always two colors to do a gradient between them. 
Oops, sorry, you can't see anything. And then we can oops, dry the brush. And here we go. And have a nice gradient. For this type of drawing, you should use really 300 gram good quality paper because it's not possible when you uh, use a paper which is drying very fast or wobbling paper when it's uh, not thick enough, not heavy enough. And for the second tower, so um, be careful not to draw when this is wet. I do it now just for demonstration so that they are not bleeding like here, one building into the other one, especially when they are very different in color. Okay, back to our drawing tools. Ah, oh, you see, of course, you should wait uh, that it's, uh, it's, it's dry, the ink isn't wet, but anyway, we can Negate, we can. Okay. No, it's fine. Fixed. It's like when you're drawing a portrait faces. Um, the first thing I do is to separate the hair from the face. And maybe this is why I always do some line work at the roofs so that everybody can easily mention where, are, where the roof starts and where are the walls. So, and then one tower here, he, here we have some maybe some roofs like in Paris, this small but very high roofs with another apartment in it as well have a dome here a small one big shadow under the roof let's see we have these oh, let's stick the the fountain pen here for the windows. So, and don't be afraid to use too much shadows, too much black. There's always enough space for more shadows because when there, there are if you want to show that there is light in the need, then you need shadow, of course. And it's, it's more expressive, of course, only if you like that. And then, of course, we will do some shadows here. This is dry enough now. Let's do this. Here, we do some shadows immediately. Therefore, I take a black and indigo. Indigo is a, something like a jeans blue. Or you can also take um, a normal blue and mix it with uh, black. And then I can add the shadows here. These shadows, I don't do a gradient. I like them to be very rough. Yeah, no gradient here. It uh, looks like a little bit, maybe like a fresco. I don't know, but I sometimes I like this much more than this nice gradients. Okay, now we can um, also add the color down here. Maybe we want to be more colorful at the 
bottom. And of course you should have a drawing here so that you know how far you have to go with this color. Uh, but anyway. Okay. And the most fun part are these popping out red roofs. Not very realistic, but nice for the drawing because I don't use a, a colorful or a, a blue or greens and so I need some uh, colorful shining points and these are my red roofs and now the point with this uh, modification of this fountain pen I didn't uh, replace it, so sometimes there is no ink and the only thing I can do is to make some spreaders uh, that the, um, the ink uh, is uh, running down and then it works again and I decided to don't uh, do this on another paper, I do it directly on the drawing and then we have these spreaders as well. So. These are the, the nice and friendly mistakes uh, sometimes happen. Okay, and at this point we will speed it up. And in the end uh, you will see the whole picture when it's finished, when it comes to the coloring on the right side of the paper, it gets more and more colorful. Here on the left side, we'll keep it more in brownish, grayish, warm gray tones like this. Then we added some more towers and in the middle you see the fog or the cloud, what else, whatever you want uh, to see in it. And here we have it, the whole uh, picture. Thanks for watching and if you like it then follow me on Instagram, TikTok and YouTube. Bye.